Before I get into today's episode, talking about Emmanuel Sanders going to the Saints and all the fun stuff that will entail, breaking down some film, just want to remind everybody that we have some podcasts and some blogs up at the JKS website. The link is in the description below. You can hear my podcast with my friend Kyle, uh, Billy the Kid. He has some some blogs, so check those out. Uh, it's a lot of fun stuff, but anyways... Back to your regularly scheduled video. So the New Orleans Saints have gone out and signed Emmanuel Sanders to a two-year deal for $16 million, so $18 million a year. And to me, this is a, a solid contract. I really like this move from New Orleans' perspective. I just think it makes a ton of sense, largely because I'm looking at Drew Brees, and his entire career, he's never really had a true number one target and a true number two target. I mean... You know, I feel like really the only guy I would say was an elite number one receiver that he's had would be Michael Thomas. And in the Michael Thomas years, it kind of has just been Michael Thomas with a lack of a great number two guy. Breeze has had some great tight ends over the years. Obviously, I think about Jimmy Graham and Jared Cook was very good last year. But in terms of having a good number one and number two receiver, I don't know if he's ever had that. And it really did kind of come back to hurt them in several ways like let's take a look at uh this play against minnesota where what you see on the screen is this is going to be a cover two man play that minnesota is in and for the saints what they're going to do is they're going to have the receivers run those routes right there so okay maybe there's a couple of routes that could get open you could notice that route right there which is michael thomas's route so that looks like a solid route against this type of coverage but Keep in mind that because it's Michael Thomas, the Minnesota Vikings are going to pay some extra attention to it. What they're going to do is they're going to have uh, actually basically a double team going on where the safety is going to come over and help cover up Thomas along with Rhodes, who is the guy who's just in charge of covering Thomas. Another thing you could look at would be that route right there. It's a route that could potentially get open. So that is where Breeze is going to end up looking once he realizes that Thomas is double teamed. So like, as you see, once the ball is snapped, Thomas is definitely getting taken out of the play, so for Breeze, he's going to have to look over and see if he can find somebody else. Now you look at Jared Cook, and he is also not going to get open right here. So, again, now Breeze is going to have to try to find a third option. For a lot of plays, especially back in 2018, Kamara would be the guy that Breeze could throw to. Like, as you see, he's trying to get open right here, but... One of the real problems is that Eric Kendricks is just not allowing too much separation. So really, this route wouldn't work out too well anyways. Breeze is going to get hit as he's thrown and doesn't make a good throw anyways, so it kind of all becomes a moot point. But even if Breeze was able to get that completion, they're not getting the first down on that play because there just wasn't enough separation. And that's kind of a lot of the problems that the Saints ran into against the Vikings. I mean, listen... They, they still won 13 games. They're still clearly a, a good team. But, you know, on that third down and three, they weren't able to get the first down. And I think if they had Sanders in that game, they probably could have gotten the first down. So I do think that having a, a good number two receiver, and listen, Ted Ginn Jr., he's kind of a good deep route guy. He's not the best possession receiver. I think getting a good possession receiver could be exactly what the Saints need to pair with Michael Thomas, who obviously is elite, but, you know, if you double team him, it's a lot more difficult to get the ball to him. Not impossible, but more difficult. And when it comes to possession receivers on the open market, Sanders might be the best guy. Like, even in the Super Bowl, I thought he played pretty well, even though they lost. I mean, you know, obviously we all remember the, the play where he was open and, and Jimmy Garoppolo missed it. But even a play like this, where it's going to be a cover three zone that the Chiefs are in... And that's where Sanders is, and since he is going to be running relatively deep, really him along with the, the defensive back who's in charge of covering the zone on the top of the screen, that's going to be the key matchup here. First things first, watch how he's just going to like sidestep like that. So he basically almost runs just completely down. And at this point, if you're a defensive back, what can you really do? I mean, you can't really try to create contact because you're so off balance, you'd almost have to knock him down because otherwise you'd be completely out of position and he could get wide open. Really, all you can do is try to get back right here, so that's what he's going to do, and Sanders, as you see, is doing a great job of just outrunning him, so at this point, he's getting pretty far past that Kansas City player, and the safety who is deep now has no choice but to make sure he continues running deep, so that way Sanders doesn't just blow by everybody and get a free touchdown. But because of both of those things, Garoppolo is able to throw it lower, he's able to hit Sanders, and they get a first down just like that, 
And that's what Sanders can do. He has a great first step. He's good on those short routes. He's a really good, you know, slot guy. He's great at it a slot, but he can run any route. So he's absolutely going to be a great fit in the New Orleans Saints offense. I think the only real concern I would have about Sanders is he is 33. But you know what? Last season, his age did not show whatsoever. I have a pretty good feeling he's going to continue to be good for the Saints. And the fact that he can run any route really does just have huge positive impacts and it can help them in several different ways like a play like this he's going up one-on-one -on -one against a Kansas City player that's going to be his route so nothing really too fancy right here and take a look at what happens right when the ball is snapped more specifically notice how quickly his assigned man is bailing despite the fact that he gave Sanders five yards of space in front of him anyways I mean he is concerned about an out route or a deep route but because of that, when Sanders cuts in, he's able to just get wide open, and that's an easy throw for Garoppolo to make. He even takes a big hit, but is able to to make sure that he gets the ball and gets the first down. And that was Tyron Matthew, too, so that's not a scrub he's going up against. Just, just a really talented player, and, you know, one slight mistake, and he will take advantage. You know, this plays another example of just one slight mistake making all the difference. What's going to happen is that you see that he's moving up to the top half of the screen. And so a Chicago defender is going to run up in that direction as well. And right here, right before the ball is snapped, you notice that that's the route that Sanders is going to be running. But the defensive back who's in charge of covering him is still kind of moving up to the top half of the screen a little bit. He's still getting exactly in position. He didn't really hustle enough to get in perfect position before the ball was snapped. It's a slight mistake, but Sanders is so explosive that he's able to easily cut down and he gets wide open because the defensive back was still moving a little bit further up. It's just that one slight mistake. A lot of guys wouldn't be able to take advantage of that, or at least not with the same consistency that Sanders can. And I do think that him going to the New Orleans Saints will just have a tremendous impact on their team. I really do. It's the kind of thing where I do feel like he's kind of gotten forgotten a little bit, you know, up until last season when he went to the 49ers. He kind of got overlooked just because, yeah, he was so good at the young portion of his career, but he still played very well later on, but it was just kind of like that he didn't play on great offenses. The Broncos weren't really talked about too much, so people just kind of overlooked him. He's a pretty good player, and still at this age, I mean, he showed with San Francisco, he can absolutely play. I don't think he's a number one guy anymore. I just don't think he's quite at that level, but he will make some plays that make you think, okay, only a number one guy could do that. He can't do it with enough consistency to be that true number one receiver but him being a number two receiver in a good offense I think is the perfect spot for him and here's an example of him making a, a great play it's going to be he's going up against a cover one play and that's going to be his route gets in between the linebacker and the safety in the middle of the field so definitely a good route against this type of coverage but one thing you're going to notice right when this ball is snapped is that his assigned man just takes a little step further towards the sideline on the bottom of the screen. So because of that, this now means that Sanders has a little bit of a, a pathway if he wants to run just over him. And that's where one other thing that I love about Sanders comes into effect, and that's just his speed. Watch how he just blows by him and is able to get open in the middle of the field, even makes a catch and takes a hit but hangs on. And, he, you know, he is kind of the type of guy that can take a hit too, you know, even though he's not... The biggest of guys uh he definitely can take a hit he's so quick so explosive I mean he does he kind of reminds me of like Russell Westbrook a little or you know how he just gets off the line so well gets by people so well just just a really good addition to the Saints and again what I love about this move and is similar to what I loved about the Malcolm Jenkins move where it's like what can we add that will help our team in a tremendous way? Let's not just try to add a talented player. Let's add a talented player in a position of not even necessarily need, but in a position that will help us more than anything else. That's what they did with Sanders. And I I hate it because I'm a Bucks fan, but I would love it if I'm a Saints fan because what a move. I mean, there's a reason why this team has been so successful these past few years, even if they haven't won a Super Bowl. It's because they make smart moves like this. I fully expect them to be totally competitive next year. But that's just my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>